strikes, accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911, next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911, innocent games turn deadly. Go get help! Quick! My only prayer was then that the help would arrive before it was too late. On Rescue 911. On September 25, 1993, while his wife was in town, Ron Albers was looking after their three children, including 10-year-old Chris and his younger sister Jessica, on their 700-acre farm in St. Leo, Kansas. We asked Chris's dad if we could go down to the sand pit, and he said, all right, as long as the bulls aren't close. Check back. We didn't really think anybody could get injured. Nine-year-old Kevin Ford and his younger brother lived near the Albers. Me, Aaron, and Chris have always been best friends, and we're best friends with Jessica, who is Chris's sister. Come on, Jessica! Chris, well, I do love him, but sometimes he's not very nice to me, but sometimes he's nice to me. But then when I be nice to him, he's not nice to me. I'm not, I'm going here. Once we got there, we tried to shoot a little avalanche down, but we never could get a big one, so we decided we were gonna throw rocks under it. <laughs> there goes one boulder. I've got the biggest one so far. <clears throat> After we got about five inches in, we decided we were gonna use our hands and dig like little tunnels under them. It's wet. You guys, watch out. Some of it's breaking off. There's sand coming right out from under the hill. Better watch out. Like about an avalanche, that just keeps falling. Chris <laughs> was tying his shoe. Huh? I threw one more rock. Got it. Onia's legs were sticking out. Run! Go get help! Quick! I was just trying to get Chris out. Screaming at him and stuff. But the boulders weighed so much, I could not even get to his back. I was just thinking about that. He wouldn't make it. I thought that he was going to die. And then me and Aaron ran through the pasture, and then we told Dad. Aaron said Chris was hurt bad. And I didn't think of the sand caving off. And when I was thinking of that, I was thinking of smothering. And it was... We're up against seconds. Chris! Chris and I were especially close. Are you okay? Chris, are you okay? When I ran up there, I pinched his leg, hoping that he'd okay? kick back, but there was no response. And I knew then he was probably unconscious or probably worse. Go back and get help, quick. Get some EMS, please. I quickly Chris. checked for a pulse, and I thought I had a faint one, but I knew he wasn't breathing. I did do rescue breathing. I was pretty... Rusty on this, but I'd just done what any other father would do. Just try to help him all I could and hope it was enough. Come on, Chris. You gotta keep breathing. Breathe. I probably gave him 45 seconds of breaths, and he did pull a deep breath. And at that point, I was relieved that he was at least alive. My only prayer was then that the help would arrive, you know, before it was too late. Don't give up now. 
Within 15 minutes, the first medic unit got to the scene. The volunteers with Cunning and Medical Rescue were led by RN EMT Rojean Yarmer. The first thing that I saw was Chris lying there. He had a laceration in the back of his head. He was not breathing sufficiently. It was obvious that he had been deprived of oxygen for several minutes. A major concern to me was, had it been too long? We got good help here for you, buddy. A Kingman EMS advanced life support unit arrived soon after, including paramedic Ira Hart. A submersion is a submersion. It doesn't matter whether it's sand or chocolate pudding. Everybody was a little nervous about the whole deal because children, they're just different. We don't do a lot of them, so that, that increases our anxiety factor. He's starting to respond to us a little more. EMT Monty Rose was a family friend. I just kind of had a bad feeling of, uh, what if this child dies? I was a little bit pessimistic, I guess, in thinking of uh, possibly having to go to the funeral of Chris. At that point, Chris's condition took a turn for the worse. He began posturing, which was indicative of head injury. So I was extremely worried about Chris. Ten-year-old Chris Alberts was taken by Life Watch helicopter to Wesley Medical Center in Wichita. Pediatric intensive care specialist Curtis Pickard took over his care. This was more than just a simple bump on the head. There was a period of time when I know he did not have adequate oxygen. And then on top of that, we know that he did aspirate some sand and dirt into his lungs. And there was a definitive potential that there would be brain injury. Tests revealed that Chris had suffered a skull fracture. When he was transferred to PICU, he was still unresponsive. I have three primary concerns with Chris at this time. The main message we had to give to the parents initially was that there would be a period of waiting. And as tough as it is, we don't control the future. We try to influence it with our interventions. Chris's mom, Martha Albers, joined her husband as soon as she heard what had happened. My kids are so important to me. You know, that's my worst fear in life, that something would happen to my kids. Kept running through my mind what a terrible mother I am. Why wasn't I home with them? Martha and Ron waited all night at the hospital. They came in and they got me and they said, we think you should come in. They said, Chris is starting to stir. And it wasn't like on TV at all. He didn't just instantly sit up and say, hi, mom. He was clear back to being a baby. You know, he pulled himself up in a fetal position. He, at one point, he sucked his thumb. He, uh, he just wasn't, wasn't Chris, but he was awake. I don't know if he recognizes anything. But at first, I didn't know why I was there. But then after Mom had told me time and time again, I finally got the idea that I had the accident. Chris underwent seven months of intense therapy to relearn everything he once could do. Though his speech and memory are still somewhat affected, he is expected to completely recover. Every day, I was longing to go home because I was getting tired of doing my therapies. They're getting old. It's like you were pretty hungry, Chris. His recovery has been dramatic. It was absolutely necessary that Chris not undergo the lack of breathing for any longer than he did. And that's where the role of his father comes in as having been so critical. Right here is where the big one was the last time. Ron saved his life. And that's going to be a mighty tough thing for a father to do. They have to bring him back to life. Okay, we tried to get this class around for a CPR class, and we had like 37 or 38 people sign up for it, which is in a community of 80 families, that's, that's a pretty good batting average. A person never thinks you'll probably ever need it, or if you do, you think it may be not that crucial, but this was a time that 
that we needed it bad. Get back. Okay, all, all yours. So I'd like to thank my dad. I think he's a great guy, and I'm proud of him. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.